Chief, Keith, and Lil Durk both came up repping the Black Disciples in Chicago and got a lot of the same homies. So why did they spark a wild beef that almost turned deadly instead of putting on for the city together? Today we're breaking down the shocking story of how they went from friends to ops. Chief Keith grew up in O Block and knew he wanted to make music from a young age. He freestyled all the time using an old karaoke machine, and by 2008, he was laying down real tracks in the booth. Back then, most people weren't really paying attention to the rap scene in Chicago, and Keith wasn't making any industry money. He had been repping the BD since he was a kid, and he ended up catching the charge in 2011 for letting off a shot from inside his whip. The cops put him on house arrest, but that turned out to be the best thing for him. There wasn't much to do while he was locked up in the house. So Keith started posting music videos on YouTube, and that's when everything changed. He dropped the video for I Don't Like, and it changed the entire rap game. The track started running up crazy numbers, and it's the reason drill music popped off and started a whole new wave in the industry. Keith was the first one to blow up and get the spotlight on him, but he wasn't the only drill rapper in the city putting in work. Lil Durk came up repping a BD set called Lamron. Their block is close to Parkway Gardens, aka O Block, so he was always tight with a lot of the same dudes Keith knew. Back in the day, Dirk wanted to make it to the NBA, but when basketball didn't work out for him, he switched lanes and started making music. He had been in the streets since he was like 10 years old, so Dirk had a lot of crazy situations to rap about. He didn't want to just blow up and leave everyone else behind though, so Dirk started his crew, Only The Family, aka OTF, and was dropping tracks around 2010. Back then, he wasn't in the booth full time and still had a foot in the trenches, and in 2011, he caught a gun charge. According to reports, the cops was out patrolling in Dirk's hood when they spotted him chasing the dude down in the street. They tried to hop out and stop him, but Dirk took off running and tossed his strap under a car and ducked into a house. It didn't take long for the cops to track him down though, and Dirk got booked on a felony weapon case. Luckily, it was his first charge though, so he was able to plead it down and only spent a few months in jail. Dirk already had a rep in the city, and the cops were so worried he'd bring weapons behind bars that they made him cut off his hair so he couldn't hide anything in it. Dirk started going hard with the music after he got out of jail. He was dropping tracks like I'm Still a Hitter and Rob Who with Lil Reese. And not before long, his name was buzzing in the city. Keith started his Glory Boys Entertainment Crew, aka GBE, and back then, Dirk and his OTF collective were linked up with them heavy. They was all basically one big crew back then, and in November 2012, Dirk told Complex that OTF and GBE were all the same family with two different names. He said all of them grew up together and was making their own lanes in the industry. So even if they wasn't around each other 24-7, it was all love. Keith was the one who blew up first and put Chicago Drill on the map. But Dirk and Lil Reese actually signed a deal with Def Jam before Keith got his deal with Interscope. Reese and Keith had always been tight, and Reese was on the original version of I Don't Like. But Dirk and Reese was real close too. What a lot of rap fans forget about is that these dudes actually came up in the streets. And the track that really got Dirk's name buzzing also helped spark one of the most violent gang wars in Chicago. The BDs was already beefing with the Gangsta Disciples, and back in the day, Dirk and Reese allegedly slid on the ops together. A couple of months before he caught his gun charge, Dirk was allegedly with Reese when they spotted some GDs from the STL EBT set and started letting off shots. FBG Butter told DJ UTV, We all got shot that night. Uh, Johnson, Jarrison Johnson, he got skinned. Skinny got chased up the street. Dirk and Reese both got booked for the shooting. The charges were eventually dropped, but Reese went on DJ UTV show and basically confirmed they was behind it and said, They know what's up. Mm. I done seen some niggas on this bitch on the pop before. The GDs and BDs weren't cool back then, but it wasn't like everyone was at war. Dudes from Dirk's Hood and Lamron would even link up with some GDs from Brick Squad and play basketball with money on the line. And that's where the real issues allegedly started. According to reports, a fight broke out over a game one day and both sides sent shots at each other on social media. It probably would have died out eventually, but then Dirk dropped the track L's anthem and took the disrespect to another level. On the track, he called out Brick Squad and their homies Wooga World and rapped, Brick Squad, I say fuck em. Wooga World with him, so fuck em. I'm in these streets, no ducking. A GD from Brick Squad named Lil Jojo heard the track and knew he needed to respond. So he picked up the mic and dropped a track called BDK. Dirk had taken shots at a couple of GD sets, but it was nothing compared to what Jojo did. Jojo and Dirk actually knew each other from back in the day and didn't have any personal issues. But Jojo name dropped him and called out every BD in the city when he rapped, You ain't with the shits, so stop the fucking flexing. Fuck trying to wife a bitch, they out here stretching. Dirk say fuck Brick Squad, so I can't wait to catch him. Squeeze his fucking 40, now they got him on the stretcher. And these niggas claim 300, but we BDK. BDK, yeah bitch, we BDK. We stacking bitch, so you know we cracking trades. 
though JoJo was putting crazy pressure on Dirk and the other BDs, but calling out one of the biggest gangs in the city turned out to be a deadly mistake and he was tragically shot and killed after letting Ops know his exact location on Twitter. Dirk was popping off in the rap game, but he still hadn't left the streets behind. In 2013, he was still on parole for the gun case he caught back in 2011. He helped turn the beef between the GDs and BDs into the infamous war in Chirac, so Dirk was still strapped up in case someone tried to press him. Being ready for the ops was a smart move, but it got Dirk jammed up in another case after the cops spotted him tossing the gun into his car. They booked him on unlawful use of a weapon by a felon and held him on a 100k bond. And that's where the real issues between him and Keith started. When Dirk got booked, most of his OTF and GBE homies hopped on Twitter to show love. What was weird about the situation is that Keith never threw him any support, and he allegedly sent the first shot at Dirk when he tweeted, OTG, hashtag, only the globe. It's not clear what Sosa really meant with the tweet, but a lot of people think he was clowning Dirk's only the family crew and saying he wasn't rocking with that side anymore. Dirk and Keith have never really aired out what actually happened, but this is how it went down according to rumors. Dirk had his deal with Def Jam but they didn't have his pockets up yet, while at the same time, Keith was already rich off of I Don't Like and his Interscope deal. When Dirk got locked up, he allegedly reached out to Keith and asked him to put up the 10k he needed to bond out, but Keith just let him sit in the Cook County Jail for a month without helping him. When Dirk finally got the bond money himself, he came out and tweeted, I'm back bitch, yeah I'm back bitch, did you miss me or you ain't care bitch, I'm free, which was a reference to Keith's first day out freestyle. Then a few days later, Keith just tweeted OTG again, and by that point, everyone knew there was some static behind the scenes, but Dirk confirmed it when he went on a Twitter rant against Keith. First, he shouted out Lil Reese and Fredo Santana for holding it down and not being fake. Then he aired out Keith and said he would have been killed already if he wasn't linked with 300. Dirk even called him an op and said he wasn't allowed in the hood anymore. At the same time Dirk was fighting this case, their homie D Rose was locked up too because he couldn't afford to bond out. So Dirk sent more shots at Keith for letting another one of their friends sit in jail. Then he finished off by warning Keith that he's not Soldier Boy and the situation could get ugly if he wanted it to. Sosa and Soulja was cool and linked up for tracks like Foreign Cars and Say She Loved Me. But then the situation went left and Keith's homie Ball Out allegedly snatched Soldier Boy's chain. Soldier sent some death threats on Twitter, but when Keith made it clear he was ready for smoke, Soldier backed down immediately and claimed he got hacked. Dirk wasn't playing around like that though, and soon enough, the beef took a shocking turn. After Dirk aired him out on Twitter, Keith responded by saying he just bought a new four-wheeler for 10k, which was the exact amount Dirk needed to get his bond. Dirk and D-Rose wasn't the only guys that Keith let sit in jail though. Back in the day, a dude named Trey Five was allegedly one of O Block's most dangerous shooters. Rumors say he was involved in all kinds of hits, including taking out FBG Duck's brother Brick. While Dirk and Keith were sending shots back and forth in 2013, Trey had already been locked up on a different case for around two years because he couldn't afford his 250k bond. According to rumors, the rest of Oblock put their money together and had 18k to bail Trey out, and they asked Keith to put up the last 7.5k to get him out of jail. Keith allegedly told him it was no big deal and he would handle it, but he never actually gave him the money even though he just bragged about spending the same amount on sneakers. That's when everything changed. There was obviously some static between Keith and his old homies, but nobody expected what happened next. When DJ Vlad interviewed Dirk at the end of 2013, Dirk said they weren't friends, but they weren't enemies either. There ain't, there ain't nothing with us. There ain't, there ain't no enemies, there ain't no friends. Dirk said he was just focused on his own wave and was worried about what everyone else was doing. But then the situation took a wild turn that proved the beef was definitely real. Boss Top, OJ, and some other OTF affiliates broke into the crib that Keith was renting with his manager and raided the whole place. They grabbed jewelry, clothes, and allegedly stole random things like deodorant and Keith's daughter's diapers too. Nobody knows what really went down, but Keith allegedly showed up in the middle of the robbery and Boss Top snatched his chain. During the whole crazy situation, one of Keith's homies ended up getting shot but luckily survived. Then the OTF dude stole Keith's whip and drove off. Keith's ex-manager allegedly called the police while the robbery was going down, but when the cops showed up, nobody would tell him anything. A few months later, Keith aired Boss Top out for switching up and robbing him. Young Chop is the producer who made the beat for I Don't Like and helped put Chicago Drill on the map, but Keith accused him of stealing too. That's when Dirk and THF Bay Zoo posted a video flexing the chain they allegedly snatched from GBE Capo. Before Keith's crib was raided, his homie Ballout allegedly had his chain snatched after a fight broke out between dudes in OTF and GBE. 
A dude named Mubu Grump claimed that Lil Reese thought Dirk was behind it and chokes him out in the club. When they go in the back, we all go in the back. The nigga ball out, check the nigga uh, Dirk like you bitch ass nigga. I heard you say something about the chain. And then next thing you know, Reese like, nigga, where that chain at on BD? Jump over there and choke him. But Reese told Cam Capone News. There was a rumor that you choked him out in the club or something back in the day. That shit fake. That shit false. That shit came from a hating ass out. That shit fake. Never, ever, never. Dirk addressed the story too, and on Gucci Mane's track Rumors, he raps, What you know about popping out and trying to hit they face first? They like smirk, yo ass be tripping, better put your case first. Choking who? I heard them rumors, niggas better play slow. I don't want no niggas who you catch, I want the one I paid for. After the shooting at Keith's crib, it looked like the situation was gonna get deadly, but Boss Top said it was all a misunderstanding. That wasn't about nothing, we got to the bottom of that, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it's like, you know? I think, I think, I think Vaughn, Vaughn, Vaughn cleared that up or something. You know uh -huh. what I'm but all that got squashed. Yeah, that's my you boy. You still fuck with Chief Keith. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my little brother. Who, who's still a very important part of Chicago hip hop. Yeah, for sure. To this day. Yeah, for sure. Boss Top might have ended his issues with Keith, but the situation between Dirk and him was about to get even worse. At the same time, Dirk was beefing with Tiger too. The two of them were seen in the studio together working with Chris Brown, but Tiger got heated over Dirk using his girlfriend's name in the verse. He was dating Black China at the time and asked Dirk to change the line and take her name out. Dirk went along with it and changed his verse without any issues. And he said Tyga and him started texting back and forth about linking up for a collab. Tyga ended up ghosting him though, so Dirk took shots at him on the Chirac remix and rapped. Heard Tyga sneak this in on me, tell them doc bitches I'm not right. Tyga only got one name, but that nigga ain't got one strike. He backpacked, so easy to get the nigga shit snatched. Tyga clapped back with the Chirac remix and rapped. Niggas thinking that they MCs can't get touched, well it's hammer time. Who the fuck is Lil Durk? I dust you like Ash and Perk. Your flow whack, my flow crap. Got marble floors, your floors crap. Got rap shit, mice traps. These niggas broke, need ankle wraps. Don't ride around in LA if you ain't come on the jet with the strap. He got the game to hop on the track too, and he took shots at Durk with the line, I don't fuck with no new niggas, they like to sue. No woo, nigga. Tiger hit me like Dirk dissing. Dirk Whiskey, Dirk who, nigga? Never heard of these niggas. Some of the nerve of these niggas. Don't make me put on burgundy, nigga. Let the AK, I'm serving these niggas. They was sending some wild shots at Dirk, which is why everyone was shocked that Keith posted the track and said, Be boo, go fuck with blood in them. Dirk was obviously pressed about it and said that Keith was disrespecting the entire city by taking their side. Beefing with your old homies from the same city is one thing, but Dirk thought Keith crossed the line when he kept rocking with Tyga in the game. While Dirk was beefing with Tyga in the game, Keith was having his own issues with the Migos. It all started when Keith thought the Migos dissed him on the track Broken Knees, and after that, they started sending shots back and forth. Keith told him to pull up, then the Migos dropped the track Jealousy and Offset rapped, Fuck nigga, you saying we dissing? Mistletoe Chopper, then bullets come kissing. Don't enter Atlanta without no permission. Since Keith was rocking with Game and Tyga, Dirk linked up with the Migos and even brought him to Oblock to shoot a video. Then a few weeks later, the beef went from disc records to real life. While the Migos were performing in DC, some GBE affiliates pulled up and started a massive fight. Quavo ended up getting his chain snatched, and later Keith posted a pic flexing the chain to clown him over the situation. Everything was getting crazy already. Keith put more pressure on Dirk when he linked up with Tyga in the booth. They dropped the track now and later and didn't take any shots at Dirk, but it was clear that Keith had picked his side and was sticking to it. After that, it seemed like the beef was only going to keep getting worse. But then out of nowhere, the news broke that Dirk and Keith had squashed everything. We was in LA. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm we was politicking. It was just a lot of BS going on before, like a lot of uh, uh, threats. Mm -hmm. But we was like, all right, man, we got to FaceTime this one. You know what I'm saying? But we squashed it one time. Though. That's a long just time to talk, three nah. hours. I was saying, we just squashed it. You know what I'm saying? I was saying, we from the same hood, so. Mm -hmm. He was talking about different things, too, but that's bro, so yeah, it's on. Then they linked up in the studio for their track decline and let everyone know that the beef was officially dead. Dirk and Keith was never super tight back in the day, and they still ain't doing much together now. But luckily, the beef ended before one of them got hurt. They might not be best friends now, but at least there's no more static and their homies ain't sending death threats and snatching chains anymore. Dirk even showed love to Keith in front of a massive crowd in 2022 and let everyone know that even though they've had some problems before, they still come from the same place and it's all love.